Around 6 o'clock on the evening of Tuesday, April 9th, 1991, the last Automat restaurant in New York City locked its doors for its final day of business. Although a small sign on the entrance read, Close for Alterations, restaurant regulars, employees, and indeed probably most New Yorkers, knew that the city's sole remaining horn and hard art Automat situated on East 42nd Street near Grand Central would be permanently shuttered. For nearly 90 years, the waiterless restaurants, better known to all as Automats, were a fixture of the daily reality and cultural imagination of New Yorkers. Inevitably associated with the Horn and Hard Art Company of Philadelphia, Automats were emblematic of their time and place, a product of a dynamic age in American history, where an earnest belief in the good machine could demonstrate how automation, which had so changed the process of assembly and distribution of other goods, could serve the average consumer on the go a good cup of coffee and a filling high-quality meal. In the words of the Horn and Hard Art slogan, the Automat promised, less work from other. The idea of the Automat originated in Germany at the end of the 19th century and found its way across the Atlantic at the turn of the 20th. Two restaurateurs, Joseph E. Horn and Frank Hardart, who had started a pioneering commissary and catering business a few decades earlier, opened the nation's first Automat at 818 Chestnut Street in Philadelphia. Given their success, Horn and Hardart eventually decided they could break into the New York market. On June 9, 1912, the first Horn and Hardart Automat opened at 1557 Broadway, between 46th and 47th Street. Contemporary article in architecture and design described, quote, the very interesting facade of terracotta and ornamental glass and the automatic serving machines located on the back wall. To the playwright Neil Simon, writing many years later, the average automat was, in his words, a large rectangular hall filled with shiny lacquered tables surrounding a glass booth where the nimblest fingers on earth dispense change for a quarter or a dollar in nickels. Endless nickels, shiny nickels, magical nickels that were slipped into slots onto the wall and before your eyes an open sesame roll came around the bend of a glass cubicle. Those nimble fingers belonged to the women properly known as nickel throwers, whose rubber fingertips would change currency into five cent pieces that consumers used to purchase the food from glass-faced chambers along the wall. This maxims of the disenfranchised, as Simon characterized them, captivated New Yorkers. From the city's cultural lead of journalists like Walter Winchell, artists like Edward Hopper, and musicians like Irving Berlin, to the working class customers who made New York run. Indeed, Berlin, so inspired by the endless cups of perfectly brewed nickel coffee that was dispensed from the mouth of a chrome-plated dolphin's head, a design cribbed from a Pompeian fountain, eventually composed a musical pee into the automats, Let's Have Another Cup of Coffee, the unofficial anthem for Horn and Hard Art. Just around the corner, there's a rainbow in the sky. So let's have another cup of coffee, and let's have another piece of pie. Edward Hopper captured the loneliness and existential angst of city life in his paintings set in automats. In a survey of the city changing New York, photographer Bernice Abbott snapped scenes of how automats were such an integral part of New Yorkers' daily lives. That deep sense of cultural embeddedness was expressed in the post-war paintings of the photorealist artist Richard Estes. For Estes, as well as others, the automat embodied New York life, for indeed, it was difficult to imagine the city without it. But during the 1960s, when Estes was painting, automats were in terminal decline. The quality of their food, which was scrupulously checked against recipes the company kept vaulted from competitors, began to slip. And even the nickel coffee, up to the dismay of many to 10 cents in 1950, began to taste wan and bitter. Losing out to fast food chains like McDonald's and Burger King, the original purveyor of fast food, Horn and Hardart concluded they could no longer keep automats open. In 1945, there were 50 Horn and Hardart automats throughout the city. By 1990, there were only two in the entire United States. When Horn and Hardart closed their last storefront just off Times Square in 1991, they not only shuttered a restaurant, they also truly ended an era for many New Yorkers. Thank you.